What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to use the Shape Builder tool in Affine Designer version 2 on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we're talking all about how to use the Shape Builder tool in Affine Designer version 2 on the iPad. This is a tool that a lot of people were excited to see come to version 2 because it hadn't been there in version 1 and I've even had a lot of people comment on this channel saying that this is the reason they didn't buy Affinity Designer was because it was missing the Shape Builder tool. So this is obviously important to a lot of people. So we're going to go ahead and look at that today. Now this video comes from my full course Intro to Affinity Designer version version 2 on the iPad, which I just launched on Skillshare and on Gumroad. If you're interested, you can take it in either of those locations by clicking the links in the description below. Now make sure that you stay tuned to the end of the video for a special offer related to that course. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to learn how the Shape Builder tool works, and we're also going to look at the other method of merging shapes, which is geometry operations. All right, now that we know all about shapes, how to move them around, and just their points and their corners, we're going to go ahead and learn more about how to merge shapes together. This is a really, really critical skill in graphic design and it's especially important when we get into logo design because this is how we're going to make a shape that is more unique than just say a rectangle or a circle or something like that. We can really create much more complex things out of vectors when we start to merge shapes together. So you can see here on this artboard, I have a bunch of different overlapping rounded rectangles and circles. And the way that we're going to combine these shapes is either by doing what are called geometry operations or using the Shape Builder tool. These can accomplish very similar things, but there are some slight differences to them. So let's go ahead and take a look. First, I'm going to start with the Shape Builder tool, which if you go all the way down to almost the bottom of the tool panel, you're going to see something that is a circle and an overlapping square that looks a little bit green or bluish. So I'm going to tap on that. That is the shape builder. Now the shape builder needs to have objects selected in order to work, but fortunately they allow you to select them using the shape builder if you don't have anything selected already. So I can just go ahead and select over my first two objects. Now if you look up in the toolbar, you're going to see that there is a plus and a minus. This determines the mode that you have when you are using the shape builder tool. So plus will add things together and minus will subtract. And you are allowed to do both, you can switch between them. Now the first thing that you can do is you can turn on what you want. So right now I'm on plus but I can also turn off plus or turn on minus or turn off minus and have everything be off. When everything is off, I can select parts of the shape. So say I just want the middle, I can select here and here and nothing will happen until I choose the command. So I can go ahead and hit minus and it will subtract. Now you'll notice that over in the layers panel that then switched to say it's a curve instead of a rounded rectangle. So actually all of these are rounded rectangles, they're just more or less rounded. So when you get here though, this becomes a curve and no longer a rounded rectangle because it's been merged together. So now let's go ahead and change back to our move tool so that we can select a new set of objects, go back to our shape builder tool, and let's see what happens if we start with our minus selected. So to do this, then when I draw across, you see it's red instead of blue because it's not just selecting an area to work on, it's going to actually erase it. So I can achieve the exact same shape, but I did it without selecting them first and then doing the erase option. Now there is a way using a modifier key to actually put this back into selection mode. And that's just holding down command or using your control wheel to select the command and then you can select your objects. Okay, so with these objects selected, I'm now going to show you how the plus works. So I'm just going to switch to plus and I'm just going to drag through. And now you can see these are currently set to blue and they all go together. So blue means two things. It can mean that you are just selecting areas that you can then execute an action on or if your action's already selected, it will execute them immediately. So you can see there is quite a bit going on just in this shape builder tool alone. But there are some more options here that I just want to highlight. So let me go ahead and select the next one. And you can see that this next button here, this is called create a new shape from selected areas. So this is something that I'm very happy they've put in to Affinity 2 here is that when you create a shape using the Shape Builder tool, you can choose to make it a new shape and still keep the original. So let me go ahead and turn that on. And now when I go through here, it's going to create a new shape. When it does that, it also maintains the old one. So you can see over here in my layer panel, I have my curve and two rounded rectangles selected. Let me go ahead and just grab one of these. 
using my move tool and when I move it you can see that I still have the old shapes. The reason I like this is when I'm creating a logo or an icon or something like that I really like to be able to keep the shapes that I've set up in case I want to make adjustments later. So that's a good way to do that because my shapes are still preserved and I have this new shape that lets me do whatever I want with it. I'm going to go ahead and just drag that off for now. We'll talk a little bit more about preserving shapes in a second here. Let's go back to the shape builder tool and select these shapes again. And I just want to point out one thing with this option where it says freehand. So you have freehand line marquee. So this is just basically your selection mode. Freehand just lets you see what I did, which is you can draw anywhere. Go ahead and undo that. Line will just let you draw in a straight line like this coming out from your first point. Undo that. And marquee will let you select over the areas that you want to do. And you have to have them completely in the selection to get them to activate. I like to leave this on freehand, but you can use whatever works best for you. Okay, next we have the little eyedropper tool. This is the use style from first selected object. So if you have this turned on, it's going to take the first selected object and use that style. Let me illustrate for you what this means. I'm going to change this one's fill color to be yellow. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to select them both go to our shape builder tool make sure that's turned on and now when we drag through here it's going to make them all yellow so you can see this in the layers panel it's yellow because it's using the style from the first object now these next three options are all ways to keep it cleaned up and unfortunately you can't actually select them in the current version of affinity designer here because the multitasking option is right there and it won't let you click on anything below it unless you get it exactly right so it's almost impossible to get these to turn on unfortunately but these will help to automatically clean things up especially when you're doing more complicated shape building so hopefully they get that fixed and in your version it's working but I can turn on and off this one which is automatically delete open curves but I can't get these other two, which is the cleanup curves and cleanup unused shapes. Okay, so that's basically it for the shape builder tool. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn about the geometry operations here. The geometry operations are done by selection. So if I select this next option here, you're going to see the regular selection options come up at the top. And this one with the square and the circle is the geometry operations. You can see that there's add, subtract, intersect, X or divide, merge curves, and then grayed out here is separate curves. So some things will only appear when they are able to be done. We're just going to go over these five options here, which are add, subtract, intersect, XOR, and divide, because these can be very useful. They work very similar to the Shape Builder tool, but sometimes you'll want to use these and sometimes you'll want to use the Shape Builder tool, depending on how you like to work and what effect you're going for. So add essentially is just going to add these shapes together and it works very similar to the add command in the shape builder tool. They are now together. But let me show you something cool that you can do when you are using the geometry operation. So let me hit command Z on my keyboard and that will undo or I can two finger tap to undo. And now if I hold down my option key on my wheel while I do my operation, add, I'm going to get something special here. You can see if I scroll down here, it says compound next to it. And if I twirl down the chevron there, I can actually see that there are two shapes still there. What this allows me to do is select one of these shapes, say this circular one, and I can still move it around. If I didn't like exactly where it did the merge, I can move that around and change it. And then you can see that the shape adjusts accordingly. I can also do things like come in and select my rounded rectangle tool and I can change my rounded rectangleness. It hasn't actually solidified the curves yet. So I can actually change that and move it around like this. So that compound shape is a really good option. Again, you have to hold down option to get that to work. And when you do, then it will actually cause the shape to become this compound shape that can be edited further still. So that can be really useful because it again is less destructive because you can still go in and modify it afterwards. Okay, let's go ahead and select this next one and we'll just look at each of these in turn. Subtract is just going to erase. Intersect is going to take just the parts that overlap. So you can see that it's getting to that same place we got with the shape builder tool at first, but it's doing it in a different way. Instead of subtracting, it's actually just looking for the parts where the shapes are intersecting. 
In the next one, we're going to choose XOR. Now XOR is hard to see without a fill, so let's go ahead and add in our fill here. And you can see that there is actually empty space where they overlapped. So XOR says wherever they don't overlap, keep it. Wherever they do overlap, get rid of it. So that's a little bit different. And we'll go ahead and select this last one here and we will choose divide. You can't tell what happens when you divide it, but it's taken each shape and made them separate. So we can go ahead and we can grab this. And then we have the one in the middle. So that's how all of these different shape building operations work. You can use the shape builder tool or the geometry operations. I've provided a worksheet in the files for this course so that you can practice this. It's got three different activities for you to do where you can lay out the shapes and then merge them together in different ways so that you can kind of practice the ins and outs of this because I know it can take a little bit to wrap your mind around. Again, this is really, really critical though for you to understand because it's one of the most important things whenever you're working in graphic design and in logo creation especially. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed learning a lot more about how the Shape Builder tool works in Affinity Designer on the iPad. Go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know what you think of this tool. Are you excited that it's here? Is this going to make it so that you can use Affinity Designer better? And don't forget that this video comes from my full course, Intro to Affinity Designer on the iPad, How to Make Logos. You can go ahead and check out the links in the description. If you choose to take it on Gumroad, make sure that you use the special code YT15 to get it for just $15. And you may have heard me mention in the video the worksheet for the Shape Builder tool. Well, if you're not interested in taking the course, but you'd still like to use the worksheet to practice your Shape Builder tool skills, you can do that. Go ahead and click the link for the worksheet in the description below, and you can get that for free on Gumroad. I'm so excited to see what you're able to create with this tool. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.